Welcome to the Storm Eye Showcase. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad that I get to show him off here, especially since this is the, um, the last IS2 video I'll do for a while. But other than that, I'm going to, as we're going through the clear, I'm going to try and commentate a bit more than usual. Since I'm gonna try, since this is basically the last time we'll see IS2 on this channel for a good long time. So we'll talk about some stages, we'll talk about my starting strat, and so on and so forth. So starting off, we have Flame Rigger and Purifier here. Uh, I decided to go for these two instead of um, Vinya and Meteorite for two reasons. The first reason is that <laughs> I wanted to show off Flame Rigger's new skin. Makes me very happy. His, his basic attack animation is much better on this one. And um, the other reason is that this combination is actually more effective on certain stages than others, including the ending four encounter, which we'll get the first ending four encounter, which we'll get to in a little bit. I decided to go for the um, the supporter elite uh, recruitment item here because obviously no Sark has supporters. Clear up ending three there. This is a. Um, this is an example of a stage that is technically better with um, Purifier and Flamebringer than it would be otherwise. I say that because Purifier makes really short work of the of the big crocs right there, meaning that if you have like an ingot chest anywhere in the crocs path, you can easily make short work of any... you can easily keep it safe. The con is that since you only have a one block of Flamebringer, a lot of wolves end up leaking through. So ideally you have someone like um, Meteorite, for instance, to help clean up any of the leaks. But it still works pretty well. I believe we're going to get Surtur here next. And the reason I get Surtur here instead of Flamebringer is because, again, I'm really trying to get as much arch damage as I can. Doesn't end up, as you'll see, we end up getting Midnight anyway, but I'd rather have the Arts damage, and then something else too. I'd also rather have the reliability of Surtur skill too, because as you can see on this stage in particular, since Purifier is aggroed onto the Gorilla Shield Guards, we need someone to help Flamebringer keep all of the wolves from leaking. And as it happens, Surtur skill too is very effective at that since it has the extra tile of range. So as you can see, she's mopping the floor of any everyone. You could technically use Midnight for this as well. The difference is that with Midnight, obviously the skill timing is a lot more awkward, and his additional range actually means that, eh, you can take him, it doesn't really... I don't think it would matter except in very fringe situations, but I prefer to take Surger. So you saw I got the 20% arch damage item there and just in time because we get the first ending 4 encounter. Now my strat for this encounter in a lot of previous attempts of hard mode was to try to Vinya and Meteorite it. Unfortunately, that doesn't work because a lot of the enemies here have high armor or high defense. So what we're doing instead, and this is the successful strat, obviously, is we go for Arts Damage approach. So Flame Ringer is on the top, the top blue box because the enemies there are a bit less um, tanky. The Redictivist paths through the bottom side. And we have our Arts Damage plus Purifier on the bottom side to make short work of, every, of the more tri of the trickier units, per se. I'm gonna put Midnight down here beside Surger because I want to get as much damage on the Redictivist as possible. But then I need to make sure I recall him in time before, um, before it's too late, before he accidentally aggros the Redictivist. Because with that specific positioning, he's in an awkward place where he's um, not letting Surger attack. I, I should have put him. I think I should have put him where Flame or er, to the left of Flame Ringer, but it is what it is. So we clear through this encounter. Um, one thing I'll note is that regarding starting items with hard mode, you want either the diamond or the. Um, you don't want the mantle. You don't want the plus one hope cost on four stars or above because that's basically unplayable. Uh, you want. You don't want the scepter. You want either the diamond. And there's one more I'm forgetting. I'll, I'll see if I can think about it later. I get the first attack speed item here, by the way, which is very nice. Oh no, I will say here, do not do multiple investments at once, because you see, I just lost 50 ingots for like, 7 ingots. Like, I, it cost me 50 to get 7. That is never a good trade. If you're doing the withdrawal, at least in IS2, only do it for like, 1 or 2 ingots, because anything more than that is just not worth it. Not worth the investment. But anyway, um, yeah, I was mentioning starting items. So starting items, I would say there's the diamond, 
and there's one other that's good. And the reason I prefer the diamond in a lot of cases is because the command EXP doesn't matter as much as some of the other debuffs. Like, for instance, the scepter is a total nightmare because of the life point, the natural life point drain. And then I don't want the um, the Ursus item either because 40% is really hard to deal with. You can also take the um, the crown. Now that I'm thinking about it, the plus 30% on bosses because that's way more situational and it means that some stages aren't as obnoxious as they would be otherwise. Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Storm High himself. I am very glad that I, I, I mentioned it, I'm really glad that I get to show him off because I've had a lot of clears with him, none of them worked out except this one. So I'm just glad that he's finally here, I like his voice actor, I like his design, his kid, everything. Just, it's also just a breath of fresh air to finally have a marksman to use. So as you'll see, he is very helpful in certain situations. This stage, for instance, he's actually pretty good because of his um, multi-target. This is a pretty straightforward stage, though. Um, one thing I've realized after playing through a bunch of IS-2 and then looking at IS-3 footage is that, in general, IS-2 stages are a lot easier. Because I, I remember, I think I said in one of my earlier videos, like, I hate justice, I hate pressing ahead, I hate the biting cold. And I still do. I still do, don't get me wrong, but... I've seen, like, um, the... I don't want to spoil too much for people who haven't played IS-3, but there are a few certain stages that are incredibly obnoxious in IS-3, especially at higher ascension levels, to the point where I look at the IS-2 stages and I realize just how easy we had it, especially with the, um, the ending 4 expansion, because I actually think there's only one hard ending 4 stage, and that's the second encounter. But we'll get to that in a bit. Going into this mini boss, this mini boss is really simple. I think compared to all the others, like the hardest ones would probably be the um, the frost, the cold, the frost cold duo, and the um, the golem. Other than that, the mini, the um, jetpack guy, and the oh god, I'm blanking. The um, the thrower guy who ramps up. Those two are really easy. It's just the um, just the golem and the frost duo that are difficult. As you can see, all I'm doing here is basically just having someone bait the jetpack guy's jump early on so that I can set a kill zone in the bottom lane. Pretty straightforward. I would actually argue <laughs> I would argue that the harder units here are the um the invis guys, because the invis guys obviously purifier can't hit them, which means that slowly both um Surger and Flame Ringer run out of life. It's a bit annoying, but whatever. It is what it is. So I actually get very lucky here again. This entire floor was quite lucky, because lo and behold, pause for effect, I get the second attack speed item, which is very interesting to me. I checked, I don't have enough, I don't have enough operators to make anti-casting worth it with the triple promotion. I decided to go for the attack speed item instead, and that is actually going to be really helpful later on, since it just makes us deal so much damage. Then we get to one of the weirder stages here, the Alpine Visitor. This is just a weird stage in general. I don't know what they were thinking when designing it, because between this stage and from afar, it just feels like they threw a lot of different mechanics together in a really clunky fashion, and it doesn't really turn out to be a hard stage. The problem with this stage is like, other than the Winter Shamans and the bulky shield guys who are about to spawn, it doesn't really feel like there's much here of note, because like, if I had a better caster than Lava on the bottom left, I would just make short work of all the units there. So it just doesn't feel like that hard of a stage, as long as you've got proper arts damage. Especially since the, um, the tile, the, um, the ice <coughs> sorry, the ice tiles help you instead of harm you. I get Meteorite here, and I decide to opt for Traveler from afar because I don't have anyone who can properly tank the, um, the drones and Bob Spears. So we decided to go for this one, and that's actually really helpful because <laughs> we get some interesting footage from it with Storm Eye just being Storm Eye. Yeah, so, as you can see he is making completely short work of that fireball caster, which is very satisfying to see. 
And this is one of the cases where his multi-target really comes in handy, because there's a clip in particular you'll see in a few seconds here, which is really exemplar of it. I'm just waiting for the clip. Nope. There we go. There we go. So yeah, you see, he is making completely short work of the fireball caster, but on top of that, he makes very short work of the hovercraft guy who comes behind him, and contributes a lot of damage to the um, the Dublin guard, or the Dublin defender right there. So that's a good example of how Stormeye's multi-target can really come in handy. Plus taking short work of all those additional hovercraft guys, to the point where we have an extra ingot. The chest is safe. That would be my ideal way of dealing with the fireball casters in this um, setup, just having Purifier and Storm I make short work of them, so I'm glad that I got to show it off. I have the, um, the minus 50% emergency movement speed play for enemies, so I decided to go for challenge mode fireworks show. Also because racking isn't really that hard of a boss. The one thing I should have done here, and you'll see in a bit, Storm Eye Meteorite, they make short work of any of the, um, the explosive spiders that try to walk in. The one thing I should have done is I should have put Surter there where Flamebringer is instead of, um, yeah, obviously Flamebringer, because ideally you want as much, I would argue, as much arts damage as possible to just make really short work of Rat King. He has not aged well as a boss. I'm, I'm actually surprised that they brought him back in IS-3 because, and they gave him his own Annihilation too. Uh, I, I'm surprised, frankly. This just doesn't feel like he's that challenging. Cool character, though. Some extra life points. I get Warfarin here, it's fine. I decide not to get Nightingale. That's okay, I'm gonna regret that later, though. Um, for now, though, I'm pretty glad because second ending encounter... <laughs> oh boy. If I sound a bit out of breath, it, I am. But it's also because this stage, this is probably the hardest stage added in um, the ending 4 expansion. And the reason I say that is because you have to kind of set up a weird sort of choke point in the middle while also killing the um, the sanity casters and the, the sanity depletioners in general as fast as possible. Like these two fo these two golems at the at the beginning, they're not too big of a problem. Especially if you have Surger, e Surger um, E2, you can just skill three of them, skill three of them if you want. The bigger challenge is just the, like I mentioned, the sanity of the depletioners because without an elemental medic, it is just a nightmare. Whew. You don't know how long you're talking until you just check the footage, and it's like, oh god, I've been talking for 13 minutes straight. My voice feels it though. Anyway, we are. The strat here is basically to just kill, as I mentioned, the sanity depletioners as fast as possible, while having a healthy amount of blockers in the middle just to keep them, try to keep, uh, I would say that alternates the, um, the sanity faint. They're the sanity stun, to put it one way. Because we'll see Midnight gets stunned there, but it's okay because we have Surger behind him. And this is another example where, um, Surger skill 2 is very handy, since she, it lets her attack upward and get that extra tile of damage. Yeah, I thought a lot about how I should properly do this stage, probably the stage I was the most concerned about in general, but it turns out pretty well. I don't think we leak anything, which is very nice. And also we make short work of the theater golems, thanks to um, Stormeye and Purifier's positioning. It's quite nice. It's just a relief to see this stage done and over with. I had... I had one other good ending 4 hard mode run up to this point, and then it ended at this same stage, so... Feels good to see it bite the dust. So now we're locked into ending 4, which is very nice, because that means I have a lot more flexibility in what routes I choose. Because up to this point, I've had to choose a lot of encounter nodes just to try and get both ending encounters. So now we are free to do what we want. And then... <laughs> <laughs> I get the last attack speed item, plus proof of friendship. So now I have all three attack speed originium items, and proof of friendship. It is the, um, what do they call it when there's, um, four, um, four singers? Is it like a quadrant? No, it's not a quadrant. I'm forgetting the word, but you know what I mean. 
But in this case, like, it's the trifecta of attack speed items, plus, um, proof of friendship, which is very nice for me. Don't have Mudrock for this stage, which is a bit of a shame, so the first, um, bully leaks through and costs us the ingot, but that's fine. This is a funny stage because with W combined with Meteorite plus a healer, you just see that they make short work of everyone that tries to come through. So you'll see the, the, um, I forget what they're called, they're like the infiltrators in the top lane just get totally nuked, which is hilarious to me. So the middle lane just isn't doing anything at this point, like, <laughs> Purifier can't even heal Flamebringer because nobody's going to finish healing range. Uh, suffering from success. Anyway, this stage is really straightforward. Purifier, or sorry, Meteorite and W just make short work of everyone. I think I get the offensive recovery item there, which is really nice. Then I get Vinya E2 plus Surger E2. So now we are in a very good spot, plus the extra life points. The thing about From Afar, I've talked about this stage before, I don't understand, because I'll wait for it to pop up. Yeah, so you see all those gorilla-like communicators on the bottom left. And this stage is really straightforward. What I don't understand is why, and maybe they do, di they do this, but I've never seen it. Um, I don't understand why there aren't paratroopers that spawn in on the bottom left. Like, after the gorillas are- the communicators are dead. And the reason I say that is because I honestly feel like this stage is too easy. Like, you just set up a funnel, like an easy choke point in the bottom- or the top right. I don't quite understand why they decided to not add some extra units there, because I just feel like it would have made the stage more difficult and more interesting. But anyway, other than that, it's a total cakewalk, and... Surger skill 2 here in 3, 2, 1... <laughs> the bear just gets totally annihilated. Uh, I get the I get fatal bolts crossfire there, which I believe is um minus forty percent HP on snipers in exchange for plus forty percent attack speed and attack, which is obviously very much worth it. And then we get the phantom here, and you know I've done I've done this stage so many times, and I'm a bit tired of killing him with Surger. So we're gonna do something a bit more interesting here because we've got Warfarin, we've got Stormeye, we've got a bunch of attack speed, and we just got the crossbolt item. So might as well have a bit of fun, right? Other than that, this stage is straightforward as always. Just um, Flame Ringer instead of Mudrock and then Purifier to deal with the, um, the big heavy defenders there. Nothing too complex. I'll mute real quick so you can just enjoy the show in its full glory. <laughs> ah, that never gets old. <laughs> Again, a, a good case where his, um, damage is just so awesome. You know, in retrospect, I'm starting to wonder if this stage is too easy. Especially as, like, a final stage. Because, compared to all the other boss modes, it feels like this one is a bit too straightforward, so to speak. Because you can just nuke Phantom so easily if you have the right setup. Then again, it is the first ending, so I suppose it's supposed to be a bit easier than the others. The one thing that the one thing that I regret never doing in IS2, and you're free to try this out, is um try and experiment with like a Surger Death Ball, because if you have an if you have at least like one attack speed item and multiple medics, you can just put Surger in a singular lane and have fun. Because she basically just lives forever. That's also a strat you can do in um stationary security service, but it's up to you really. I get the medic attack speed item here because I feel like it's worth it in general. It just turns Hibiscus into an absolute god. I make a mistake here. I had gotten Ifrit there previously, and I kind of regret getting Ifrit in retrospect. But if anything, I should have gotten the E2 for her there. Because, as it turns out, I don't need all the life points that I got. I was a bit too cautious, so to speak. 
This is the first time, the first and only time, I believe, that I'll get to show off Ursus Desire. I'm really glad that it wasn't the hard mode version, because that one's a nightmare, but... Yeah, just use multi-target plus AoE to make short work of the drones, and then have enough damage to kill the, um, the two block raiders before they can leak. I love having AoE. AoE is so fun. Cause you see that gorilla got just- the gorilla shield guard just got totally melted by, um, damage that wasn't even directly on him. And then the theater golem gets melted and it's just... beautiful. So beautiful. So playwright stage. Um, the last time I did this, sadly not, not enough DP for Mudrock, which makes me sad. Um, I decide to go with- I'm just gonna nuke- I'm just gonna nuke him with Surtur, but um, I did mess it up last time. Because I think my, um, my aggro priority was wrong. And you see, it, ends, it still ends up being pretty scuffed, but we managed to make it. <sighs> so, I will just let the stage speak for itself. The only thing I'll say going in is that my purifier positioning is wrong. I put her, where you see I'll put her, I should have put her next to Tot on the, um, the upper right tile next to W instead, as you'll see here in a bit, because... She ends up taking way too much shaman damage. It doesn't kill her, but you can see how with um, less attack speed or um, less arch damage, that would start to be a big problem. So ideally put her next to W so that she minimizes the amount of damage she takes. したものはすぐに知らせるんだ。下がって。悪くない場所だ。集中砲火。Yeah, that stage is the stage is pretty straightforward otherwise. It's just that I shouldn't have taken Ifrit because I needed an extra healer so that I could have used Warfarin instead, where um Purifier is to buff Surtur even more so that she would just have totally shredded play right before her, her um, attack speed got lowered. But whatever, it's fine. We still managed to clear the stage without many issues. And that's... that's IS2. I mean... Whew. The only thing I'll say is that, um... I actually think there was something else, but... The <laughs> only thing I'll say is that I'm... I still feel like you should be able to choose which ending you get without it being tied to RNG, because I just feel like it's so frustrating to have a good clear, to do everything right, and then to get the wrong ending, or to not get the encounter at all. I've said it before, but that's my one big gripe with IS-2, and I don't think they changed it in IS-3, but there's a lot of interesting stuff in IS-3 to make up for it. I decided to calculate it, and just let the last units leak just because. Luckily, the, the math works out in my favor, but it's still a bit anxiety-inducing. Might as well end off on a close call, am I right? I like how the theater golem costs 4 life points and has 4 block. It's very fitting. But yeah, that's IS-2 in its entirety. I'm really glad that I can show off Storm Eye and show off some other parts of the clear. Just, um, and I'm really glad that I'm done with IS-2 in general. Feels good. But, um, I had a fun time doing it. I really like IS- or Integrated Strategies as a game mode. I'm really excited to see, like, what they do in IS-4 or with an, um, an IS-3 expansion. No, but other than that, this was a pretty straightforward clear. Lots of... <laughs> I got pretty lucky overall, but... <sighs> it just feels... 
nostalgic because it's finally the end. Anyway, yeah, that's all from me. The next thing you'll probably see from me is some videos on IS-3 or Chapter 7, and yeah, that's all from me. Have a good day, and enjoy the new outro.